Okay, so, so um, I'd like to take you back to 1958 when we first began to use computers in our practice. Um, perhaps you could say something about how that came about and what it was all for. Okay, well, briefly, I was making a work, it was a work called 19, which was summing up what I've been doing in the previous few years by a multiple number of entities. And I had to put those entities together to make one order. I had particular requirements about the structure of that combined piece. Uh, but when I tried to do it, I found it pretty much impossible to determine an arrangement that met my requirements. My requirements for the work should be how it was it just so happened that I had just published a paper in the Journal of Symbolic Logic where I had used a computer to solve a somewhat similar problem in logic. And so it occurred to me that I could use a computer for this for the same purpose in my own. So I did. I wrote a program that, into which I stated my problem. I arranged with it and ran it in fact for three hours of it. Um, I had to be cut off after three hours so I didn't it now. It, the computer hadn't solved the problem but I got it to print out as far as it got and it turned out that I could then see then one more step which gave me the solution of it. so I used it as a problem solver and that work is going to be showing the right vision a reconstruction of so Ked has destroyed the original exhibition and sentence. It's now been reconstructed. Okay. So obviously um, a lot has passed on to the the water has passed under the bridge since then. Sure. Can you perhaps uh, coming up to the nearer in time to say the nineteen eighties when technology was beginning to change quite a few things? And um, say something about the way that those changes influence these computers. Sure. Well, it's, it's worth just mentioning that in passing through the 70s, I started to work on the notion of people communicating across some kind of electronic network, very low bandwidth, making artworks that were network based. So, interaction. But the biggest change really came in the 80s when we had personal computers and portable machines. So they could Move them into exhibitions. It's made a big difference. And uh, <coughs> I'd always been interested in time, so that, for example, music has influenced my visual work quite a lot, time based stuff. And it turned out that I came to an understanding that I could build structures, underlying organizational structures, this time deliberately building them rather than trying to have that operated across time. So I could use the computer to, in a generative way, to generate a computer that I specify time based work in ways which would have been, if not impossible, extremely labor intensive to be done without. And is this what you call the video construct? Yeah, that's what I call the video construct. It's what kind of work are they? Well, they're abstract work, basically, construct construction, uh, squares and stripes and so on, arranged in particular forms. Initially, they were in black and white because, uh, to begin with, the fidelity of colour on computer output was poor, not a certain. But then later, it became feasible to start to think about colour and our regular, normally. Uh, but what they are is they're, I, I express in logic the underlying structure of the work in time. And then I run the logic and, and what we see on the screen, time-based work, is a kind of trace of a search for a solution to a problem. Logic. So what will the audience actually see? How will the audience um, um, Can you we'll, we'll see, a, a clue as to how the audience might uh, 
Well, I mean, in terms of what it is that they're actually yeah. experiencing. Well, what, what they're experiencing is um, dynamic um, images where they will see a kind of a logic to it, a relationship between it, but they will find it very hard to comprehend exactly what that is. There will be a sense of structure. It is recoverable, but it's not likely to be recovered. By the way. So you have a feeling of structure, of order, of things happening in some kind of way, which is determined, but the precise determination of that is hard to understand. But there, there are two kinds, really. There are works that are relatively short, like film. Most of the works are ones that last all day, so rather than saying you watch it happen all together, you look at it and you see some change, come back later in the day, and now it's quite different. You see different changes. I always say that's rather like um, seeing a sculpture with the sun in a different position of day and shadows all the time. So could you see the, the, the program that generates it with a kind of musical school? Um, uh, and what you're saying visually from an audience point of view is a piece of visual music? Yes, I think visual music is a very good uh, point. And the program is the structure of the school. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, well, that, I mean, that brings us back to the day in, in, the, in, the, in that um, the, the exhibition on May the 11th is uh, North, which opens on May the 11th at the Lucent Park does begin with a performance, which you call a correspondence. Uh, I'd be interested to, to know what, what you meant by correspondence. Okay, well, uh, the, the term comes from Baudelaire, actually. Uh, the, the, um, the idea is the mixing of different media in one work, so that we have correspondences like, between the video construct and the music in the space of life. And it's as if the video part is another instrument, so that we have one piece of this music with a number of instruments, could be many more than this particular. So, um, but uh, the visual and the sound are equal. It's not that one is illustrating the other, so it's not uh, music company video, the other way around. It's one piece with a number of voices, as it were, a number of instruments. But some of the instruments have to generate vision. Okay. okay, so finally, perhaps you would like to say something about where next, in terms of once, once you see this exhibition as a, a rounding up of certain parts of you, what, what happens in the future? Well, I think the future is much more concerned with interaction, which was a concern of mine two years ago, but I think is becoming a dominant one in the next phase. <coughs> Two kinds of interaction, really. Interaction between the video construct on the wall and the audience, so you might speak to it or wave at it, and think it behaves differently according to this kind of interaction. Interaction between both. And secondly, in performance, it's interaction between the music and the vision, so that sounds generated by performance can be used in real time to change 